What's up? So today's my first day off after 18 days straight. I needed a reset, so naturally I came here and started making another video. Tomorrow, tomorrow, not tonight, we're gonna be talking about beaches, but I'm gonna sleep first. still smell like pizza and that was definitely not the sleep that I needed but we're here we are talking about beaches today if we haven't met yet I'm so sorry that you had to meet me this early in the morning but my name is Grant and I work in marine science at the University of Delaware in the United States I also surf so beaches like this one are really near and dear to my heart kind of how they change over time and just being there today I'm about an hour's drive south of where I live at Assateague Island National Seashore which is this beautiful, gorgeous, practically untouched barrier island. And I kind of think it holds the key to understanding how Delaware's beaches work as well. What's going on down here? So it's currently November and at this rate you'd be very lucky if this came out before 2024 but I will tell you that it already certainly feels like winter out here and the beach is already starting to transition to its winter profile which means there's a sandbar which means I'm out there. Well, having a sandbar in the off season is pretty great. And a lot of the time it disappears in the summer, especially during the later months. This is one of the most longstanding observations of sandy beaches that they have this wintertime profile with a sandbar and a trough, and then a pretty narrow landside or sub aerial beach. And in the summertime, the swells start to just gradually accumulate all that sand back up onto the sub aerial beach forming a much wider subaerial beach with a berm or kind of like a ledge which is which is great that turkey. Dude. There he goes. <laughs> Come back. Oh, mother. Let me know in the comments, should I go out? <laughs> Probably won't. Well, I'm back in Delaware and this is definitely not the welcome that I wanted, but we've got some storm soil here, which is actually perfect timing to show kind of how different Delaware is. Um, I want to show you something. Ooh. So look at this. This might not look too different from the soft sand of Astique, but I assure you it completely changes the dynamic here versus in Astique. So what we have here in Delaware is actually a mixture of sand, just like Astique, and gravel, which is a little bit coarser. Now, I'm sure you would have hoped that for like a niche beach like this, 
that they would have come up with some original name for this type of mixture, but they didn't. I promise you, it's literally called mixed sand and gravel. So the natural question then is like, why are Delaware's beaches mixed sand and gravel where acetiques are so close, but completely different composition of sand? It ultimately comes down to what was available to the state, local, and federal um, coastal management teams that took sand from other sites that were available to them and put them back onto the beach in Delaware to combat long-term erosion. And if you live in Delaware or on another coastline with managed beaches, yes, it's a Pandora's box here too, and no, I'm not opening it today. Okay, so great. The sediment's a little different. Why am I here in a storm? Well, it is crazy how much uh, just a little change in sediment composition can have on the dynamics of the beach, how it changes over time. In Delaware, the coarseness of the sediment causes it to change on an event-driven time scale or a storm-driven time scale instead of that seasonal time scale like we saw down in Assateague on a sandy beach. So now we have this storm profile which no longer has a sandbar, it's just pretty much flat all the way down and we have a recovery profile, which we basically just took from, we renamed the summer profile. And then in between those two, there's just this crazy concoction of shit that we call the transitional profile. Oh my word. Yeah, it looks pretty fun over there. It's now the next day, and storm profile has now formed here on the beach and before I'm like very out there here is what I think is the wildest part of all of this. We know that the mixed sand and gravel beaches like Delaware's are so fickle that they form a storm profile during a storm and then already start transitioning back to recovery during the subsiding phase of the storm or today. This is the equivalent of hundreds of dump trucks of sand changing overnight and then changing back the next day or the next night. Then after that, things tend to slow down a little bit and the full recovery period might take a few weeks or it might take a few years, depending on the strength of the storm. All right, I'm out there. Surfing these beaches can be kind of tough and the beaches themselves, they're pretty weird and they're kind of niche and they're really not that well studied. So next time you're here, I urge you to take a look at this beach with a newfound curiosity because it's really crazy how much this place changes literally overnight. For me, it's ultimately made me want to understand everything even more and ultimately protect it because as somebody who's pretty involved with this stuff, nobody really understands the nitty gritty of how these beaches really work, let alone how they interact with the other beaches and inlets, estuaries, weather patterns, etc. that form up this massively complex coastal system. like this video please consider giving me a like or a subscription that really helps me out recently we had a very close colleague of ours in our lab pass away and during his celebration of life there were so many stories of him ruining everybody's day at the beach with this type of knowledge and i really want to keep that spirit alive with all of you so please stay tuned next up we're going to be taking a look at the 20,000 20,000 derelict crab pots in Delaware's Inland Bays, which is a recreational crab fishery, and how we can maybe clean it up. I will see you real soon. I really, I really need to stop swearing.
videos.